Hi artsy friends, Tristina Dietz Elms here and in this video I'm going to show you about using Pebio's drawing gum which is a masking fluid. They say here liquid frisket. Sometimes people also call it frisket. And what is it? It simply saves the white in your watercolor papers so that you can put paints, watercolor paints and inks over top of it and then you can roll it off and that way you'll preserve that white. That white will come back. And the drawing gum comes in a couple of different formats. We've got the large 250 milliliter bottle, the 45 milliliter bottle, and then two types of markers. So there is the 0.7, which is a really tiny tip marker, and then the uh, let's see what this is, four millimeter bullet point marker. The cool thing about the markers is that there's a spare nib in the top of each marker. So when you receive it, it already has a nib in it like that. And then there's a spare nib here in case you need to replace that nib. And that's huge, especially when you're dealing with liquid frisket, which oftentimes can mess up the tip. But this way you'll be able to snap out that tip and put in a new one. And what are some other ways that I like to use frisket? I like to put it into a fine line dispenser, which has a little pin in it like that. So with the fine line dispenser, you're able to get your fine lines with it. But if you want to get more out, more fluid like this, it gives you a beautiful fine tip. And actually these fine line applicators come in several different sizes, as well as now, instead of just coming in this little bottle, it's coming in what's almost like a marker. I love that. I'll have these products listed in the description of my YouTube video. So if you do wanna to go to YouTube, you'll be able to find out how to get some of these items for yourself. Besides the drawing gum, I'm gonna be showing you some really cool tools that I use to apply it with, and then some of the different kinds of watercolors that I use. And I have a heat tool here so that we don't have to wait, we can just dry up the drawing gum and the watercolors very quickly. Now there are two types of paper that I do this on. I do it on regular watercolor paper, cold press, so this has the texture on the surface, and then I also use hot press. The hot press is smooth. I find for myself the hot press is better when I'm using the markers because there isn't all that texture to grab up the paint that's in the markers. It'll sit on top and work beautifully that way. For the textured paper, I like to use the drawing gum in the bottle with some of these different tools in order to put it on the surface. Here I was experimenting with the starfish that I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video. And you can see I preserved or saved some of the dots and I like to take the frisket off the old fashioned way with my finger there, but you can see it saves the white underneath the paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you now how I use it. I'm gonna start with the starfish. Let's take the four millimeter marker, make sure you shake it up real well. And when you store these, store them so that they're flat like this. Don't store them up like this, otherwise this is gonna dry out. You wanna keep that tip moistened and I'm using a paper towel to make sure that I've got that moving. If for some reason you find that your color is not coming out, you can see here it's blue. If the color is not coming out, you can literally pull the tip out and go wash it or flip it like this and then continue so that that way you get a more continuous flow. So let's put that aside. And I'm gonna start with the center here of the starfish. And it's a pentagram. One, two, three, four, five. This is the larger tip. And when you wanna cover more area, you can use the larger tip. Also, this larger marker is child safe. This one has no latex in it. So if you are allergic to latex, pick up this four millimeter marker. This is a latex free marker. This marker, which has the 0.7 or the fine tip, does have the same material in it as the drawing gum. It is a latex base. 
And let's go ahead, shake this puppy up. And again, I'm gonna start it on my paper towel to be sure that the masking fluid is flowing. Now we're gonna draw this line here with some dots and create the little side edges. So I'll just use this, just using the marker. When you push down on the marker, it flows out. So that was the middle rib. Now I'm gonna go down the sides here. What's gonna happen is that everywhere that I put this masking fluid is going to end up preserving the white here. Okay, we have a really happy <laughs> dancing starfish here. Again, everywhere that I put this, you're gonna see white spots. In the center, I'm gonna put some larger spots. So here we go again. Let's get this flowing. I'm gonna put bigger spots in the middle here. There we go. Now let me talk about the watercolor. And normally you would leave this about 15 minutes to dry. If you wanna speed up the drying, you can use a heat tool. However, what you're gonna find is that the heat tool will work brilliantly with the latex. I don't recommend using the heat tool on the water-based. And why is that? Because the water-based, if you use too much heat, it can absorb into the paper and then it's difficult to get it off. That's my experience, that's what I've found with it. Let me show you some alternative ways to put on the drawing gum using the drawing gum liquid as opposed to out of the marker. All right, my last video stopped on me before I shared with you how to use these tools. So I'm gonna go through the tools again although you can see a little bit of what I did with it on here. I take the drawing gum that I've shaken up and then set aside and let the bubbles go out, and I put it in a separate container, a little cup, something like that, and see how fluid it is. And then before I put the top back on it, I use a little bit of Vaseline. So <laughs> here's a trick, studio trick. You open up your Vaseline and then take a tiny bit of it and put it around the edge here. You can wipe it off first and then put a little bit of Vaseline on it. What that'll do for you is that'll be sure that the next time that you go to open the bottle, it's very easy to open. Yay, love that. <laughs> and you can use this same trick for your acrylic paints as well in order to be sure that they will be easy to open the next time you go to use them. Now, I added a little bit of water to this. I like to have a spray bottle around because it's easy to add a little bit of water that way and not add too much water, <laughs> which is if I, you pour like this from a cup, you tend to get too much water in there. So spray it in instead. And then I use a very old brush. You do not wanna use a, one of your fine watercolor brushes when you're working with 
your frisket, your masking fluid, your drawing gum. You wanna use a brush that you really don't care about because the tip is gonna get all grungy from the latex. And I'm gonna mix this up here with my little brush. And then you can take the brush and go right into the surface here and draw on. Now what you'll notice is that it goes on thicker and then begins to get thin. And the reason for that, of course, is it's being used up on the brush. That is why it's great to have the markers because the markers have a continuous flow. So if you wanna write words, it's really handy to use the marker to do something where you need continuous flow. But if you're okay with just putting a little bit of masking fluid down, you can use it on a brush like this. Now I do wipe it off in the water as fast as possible and then wipe it off with a cloth. You will notice, however, that it is gonna get stiff and it's gonna get little bits of latex in it and you can just take those right out like that. Another tool that I love is this shaper. It's a color shaper and it has a flexible tip to it and it's made of silicone. So this will not stick to the silicone, which is great. I could use it like this. It does deposit a little bit bigger dots than came out of the marker. So just be aware of that. Although you can get these shapers in different sizes. You can, let's try to do a, a little line. It's a little bit thinner line with that tip on there. Yeah, so it is depositing a line, yay, which is looking good. Ooh, so much fun. And the beautiful thing with this is it's super easy to clean off. You just put it in the water and wipe it off. And even if a little bit of latex gets stuck on there, you just roll it off with your fingers. What? That is so cool. Love those. Then you can also, oop, before we do the this, you can also use a Q-tip. This is a Q-tip that has a point to it. And I can put that in there. You're going to get a little bit bigger lines with that. There we go. You're going to deposit a little bit more of that. And the beauty of these though, of course, is that I can just throw them away. And you can make dots with these too, and your dots will be a little bit bigger. And I kind of like that. See there. Ooh, this is so cool. Now with the water that I added, I can go up to 50%. Here is the toothbrush. After you've used your toothbrush <laughs> for this process, please don't use it for your teeth, okay? Um, but I do use old toothbrushes and I do find that I need to add that little bit of water in order to be able to get it to splash onto my surface. But this gives you, you can do mist on mountains, you can do the mist off of water, you can mask it off by putting a little bit of paper here and here and just getting the mist in this area. But here we go. Oh, there it goes. I got some really cool mists going there. Okay, great. Now this, you're gonna want to just drop it in your water, make sure that you clean that off right away. And notice that I did get a little bit of it right here over top of my starfish. So I'm gonna pick that up because I don't want that big blob on my starfish. And there's a little bit more right here. The other from underneath is already dry, so I'm able to just pick that up before it's dry. Yay! Okay, and one other really unique item that I wanna show you how to use on the surface here is this sponge. This is a natural sea sponge, and I like how it has all kinds of little ridges on it, little edges. And you can just dip that right into here. Now I'm gonna get some of the extra off here so that I'm not putting lumps or bumps on there. And then I can just go in and add some really cool texture to my work surface using the natural sea sponge. Again, you're gonna to wanna to put this immediately into the water to be sure to get that off of there. 
And if there's any extra that you want to remove, remove it right away before it starts to dry. So work on small sections. If you have a larger painting, work on small sections at a time. If you find that you have any bubbles in your drawing gum that gets deposited on your artwork, your toothpick is your good friend because you can go in and pop the bubbles with the edge of the toothpick and that way you'll have a nice coverage on the paper. If you don't use a toothpick, what you're gonna find is that you may have little holes in the area that you put your drawing gum. So here, for instance, I have a little hole. Yeah, it's actually picking up some of that because it was already partly dry. So I'm just gonna roll that right up because it's already dry. There we go, take that off. Okay, but definitely it's helpful to have a toothpick handy. Now we're gonna wait for a minute for this to dry, but while it's drying, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the paints that I'm gonna be using on it and the brushes. The paints I'm gonna be using are a combination of acrylic ink, not acrylic out of a tube, but acrylic that is in fluid form like this with an ink. And these are Pebio's Artist Acrylics. Then there is actual watercolor in a dropper bottle. This is Echo Line, and it is true watercolor. Then we have some Japanese Tsukuniku. These are some of my favorites. You can see this red is very well used. <laughs> And this, these are cool because they come in these little ceramic dishes that you can use later. You can refill them up with watercolor. And this is my latest absolute favorite for accents. You see that gold right there? Oh my gosh, that color gold is so beautiful. And I have the Pebio watercolor. This is a travel watercolor set from Pebio, and I love it because it's compact, it fits in my purse, and look at this. <laughs> you could just screw the brush together, and now you have a proper, nice, handled brush to use with your watercolors when you travel. That's terrific, I love that. And you can use your traditional well and add some of the cream watercolor into the dishes here, and then add your water and pick it up that way. I'm gonna show you using each one of those different things so you can get a feel for how they work on the surface of the watercolor paper. The brushes that I like are um, Halcyon watercolor brushes. This is a number 10 round. Oh, there's such beautiful spring in that. I just love that. And then, this is a Princeton Velvet Touch. You, it can be used for not only watercolor, but also acrylic because it has this beautiful synthetic top to it. And it just, it makes a beautiful point. You see that? So that when you are trying to put your paint precisely in an area, this is a beautiful Princeton brush for that. And then this is um, Dynasty. I actually got this over at Jerry's. Artorama, and it has a squirrel feel. My understanding is this is synthetic squirrel, and it has just the most beautiful fluffy tip to it. So when you're trying to flood an area with your watercolor, this is a beautiful style of brush to use for that. And then in my water right here, I have my smaller Halcyon brush. It's around a size six, and I like that for working into small areas. Well, let's get going with our paint. Now that the drawing gum is all dry, you're gonna see that when you used the toothbrush and you spattered it on the surface, they're gonna be, in some cases, little bits that didn't actually grip onto the paper. And because of that, I'm just gently rubbing across here. Not too much, because if I rub too hard, it will take some of these areas off that I did put on with my brush and my my Q-tip. But there are just some little itty bitty bits that I can see and I don't wanna pick up those latex bits on my brush. With the drawing gum, I'm gonna use a damp paper towel 
and I'm just gonna soak this up. That's the easiest way. You do not want this latex going down your sink because imagine when the latex, when there's no water there and it gets hard, <laughs> what will happen to your sink? So make sure that you wipe it out with a damp paper towel instead and throw that away. Now your cup's ready to be used again. I'm going to start by putting some pretty blue and green wash in the background. And because I'm doing a wash around this little guy, my little starfish, I'm gonna use the big brush that I told you about, the Dynasty with the imitation squirrel. And I'm gonna dip that in some water here, get it damp. I don't want it to be too wet. And this is the Pebio set that I showed you earlier, like that. And I'm gonna take some of this blue and a little bit of the green because I want something that's almost like a peacock green. So I'm taking this deep blue and some of the green. All right, and get my brush damp a little bit more and bring that in. Anywhere that the drawing gum is sitting on the surface is going to be resisting this paint and then you're gonna not be able to uh, see any color there. The color is just going to be white like the paper. There we go, a little more water and so I can flood this area. Mm. Oh, I just love playing with paint. The colors are so beautiful. And I'm gonna go back in over top of this with a little bit of the ink over here, the acrylic ink, so you can see that as well. If I just go on with straight color, you'll see it's quite a bit darker. That's why I've been flooding my brush so that I can bring some more of that color and that more of the washy so it looks more like you're looking through water. And I don't want it to be that green, do I? Later we can get closer in to the starfish in order to get the color more precise around the edges. I'm even going to put some of this underneath Mr. Starfish here. Hello. Notice I'm not going all the way to the edges. You don't have to be completely covering the whole area. Just cover the areas that make it look like you, you're using stroke work. I don't like my paintings to look like they're a photograph, so I want there to be more looseness in the painting. There we go. That was the watercolor. Now with the watercolor, by adding more water, I can actually lift up some of the color. So if I go back in with my brush and I just tamp this, I'm gonna lift up the color. You can see the color begins to go back to the paper color. Whereas the next thing I'm gonna do is show you putting a little bit of the inks on there. And then you'll notice that once the inks are dry, they are not gonna be able to be lifted back up because they're a permanent color. Let's use a little bit of the cyan. I like the cyan. And we're going to put that in the wells here. And these have, these are the Pebio acrylic inks and they have a dropper with them. So I'm going to put a drop in there. And I'm going to add a bunch of water to it. Oh, what a beautiful color. That's what I love about the acrylic inks and the watercolor inks out of the jar as you really get a beautiful bright color. I don't want to completely lose the beautiful blue green that I have in the background there but I'm just laying a little bit of it in here just to intensify the color a little bit because when watercolor dries it tends to dry lighter than the color that you see when it's wet. 
And this way, when you use the acrylic inks, the color is more intense. Nice, fun. Now, if I let the color dry in here, it's gonna become permanent. So I'm going to wipe it out immediately with a little more water and a paper towel. These other colors in here are watercolors, and so just by getting them damp later, they will come back out. If you are working with a watercolor ink, you can leave the colors in, but if you're working with an acrylic ink, you need to wipe it right out as soon as you're done with it. Don't let it dry in there. Watercolor ink colors are a little brighter than the watercolor in the pans. So let's add a drop or two in here. Wow, <laughs> that color is beautiful. Let's see what color this is. Echo line number 311. Here I'm gonna use a little bit smaller brush because instead of washing an area, I wanna be more precise with where I put it. Here I'm gonna use a brush that has a nice tip on it and reach in there and I'm gonna use this to do the center here. Do you see where the drawing gum is resisting the paint? Love that, love that. So I'm just putting some flaming colors in here. And then I'm gonna come back with some browns. But that's your nice bright color that comes out of the bottle with an, a watercolor ink. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up using more of the watercolor from the pans. I have a dark brown here I'll put around the edges. Even though it's dark brown, do you see how light it is? I'm gonna layer this. And that's why I'm going directly from the pan too because the color's not gonna be as dark with the watercolor. And the neat thing is that as I bring the water up toward the orange, the orange will let me, because it is watercolor, it'll let me blend the colors together. If this was acrylic ink, I wouldn't be able to blend the colors unless it was still wet. got a little bit of paint where I don't want it so I'm gonna go back in there and lift it out and I can go back in and put some more blue in there later if I want to fix up the blue or right now I can get the orange color out of my brush and blend some of that blue together Now I do want to darken up or add some more depth to the color of my starfish. So I'm going to add some of this tan color. Because right now my starfish is looking a little orange, which is fine when you see them in the bright sunshine underneath the water. And I've, I've seen starfish in the water. Jeez, I've seen big starfish that will fill your hand. <laughs> in the water in the Bahamas when I've been on a sailboat in the Bahamas and also in the Virgin Islands. By doing this layering, your colors will, the undercolors will reactivate and mingle together with the colors that are underneath it. 
And to me, that gives you that vibrancy and that depth. Don't be afraid to layer your watercolors. Mm. He's a cutie. Now I'm looking at where the spots are and I wanna be sure that I'm covering the areas where the spots will be. This little guy has a funny, funny shape. But when you see them underwater, they're moving their legs in order to be able to move along the sand underneath with all these little, ooh, these little tiny tentacles that are underneath here. They're so cool. That's why when you put it on your hand, they kind of suction to your hand because all those little suction cups are attaching to your fingers and it's really fun. Okay, I'm happy with that part of it. Now I'm gonna add in some of the gold. Oh, just because I'm in love with this gold right now. And I want to have a touch of gold on everything, it seems like. Let's use this brush that has such a beautiful tip to it. This was the Princeton Velvet Touch that you can use for either watercolor or acrylic paints. But here I'm using the Japanese inks. And I'm going to go around the middle and add a little bit of a touch of gold to that middle section and then bring some of the gold accents in around here. Let's take it down in the middle there. Guys, so cute. And I love exposing the little white spots. That's going to be the fun part at the end here. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so fun. I liked the orange a little bit better in the center here to have a little more of the orange left over. So I'm going to take up some of that gold, put that away, and I'm going to dip back into the orange mm, because I just love that orange so much. So here we go. This was from the Echoline ink, and that's the watercolor ink. There we go. Now it's a little more orange combined with that gold. Excellent. And I have a few other colors here that are watercolors that come from a tube that I had shown you earlier, something like this is a Sennelier tube of watercolor paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and reactivate this watercolor. So if you see here, now I've got some yellow and I'm just gonna put that over here and add a little, oh, this is one of my favorite rose matter colors. So I'm gonna create this little bit of a fiery orange here. Yes. And I'm going to add a bunch of water so it's not too 
bold, it's a little sloshy, and I'm just gonna highlight it in here. What do you think, am I overworking it? <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm just, if I play with color too much, I can feel like I'm overworking something. But this is about experimenting and seeing what you like. And I can always add a little more water and blend the colors in more. And that is what I'm gonna do here in a second. All right, time for a little more water, and a little more blending. I'm gonna switch brushes for the blending. And isn't this a nifty little brush holder this is a chinese brush holder and i do have on my art studio website i have a, a an art studio website called tracks art studios and i do sell these on the tracks art studios website i find it's better to keep the brushes from rolling around and it also keeps the paint from going one into the other brush when they roll right into each other and then the colors start to combine which happens <laughs> so here we go with the halcyon brush and I'm just adding a little bit of water so that I can soften these edges. I didn't want the edge there to look quite so blocky like it does here. Also, if I wanted to soften the edges, I can take my damp cloth and go in here and remove a little bit of the paint. And then that can help to soften those edges too. just lost a little bit of that boldness there so I'm gonna dip back into here grab just a little bit more of that color and darken it up right here that's the beautiful thing with watercolor is you can just go back in and in a few seconds you can re-blend your colors There you go, that made that area heavier and darker again. What I'm doing is I want to bring attention to these gold spines, and that is why I'm using the darker colors right next to the spine. That way the gold color will look like it's more raised when it's dry. All right, y'all, I could blend all day, <laughs> but I'm not gonna put you through that. What I'm gonna do now then is go ahead and add a little more darkening to this area. You can see the areas where I've added the drawing gum to this, and I really like how the blue has top and bottom dimension, but now I'm gonna go back in and clean this up a little bit. And I am gonna use a little more of the cyan of the Pebio Artist Liquid Acrylic. Just one drop. Bing. And maybe I will add one drop of the yellow to that. Just a tiny bit, maybe even like half a drop if I can get a half a drop off. There we go, let's see what we get here. Go back to the squirrel-like brush. It's a mop that'll hold a lot of paint. Oh yeah, there's almost an ocean green. You know what? 
that's a little bit too green, isn't it? Okay, there we go. We're gonna add a little bit more of the blue. Actually, this is ultramarine blue, so, which is a little bit darker hue of blue. So I'm gonna add just a touch of that. And let's see what happens. What color am I gonna end up with? Okay, that's a little bit better. It's a little deeper. So I'm gonna bring the deeper color in here. What I'm doing is I wanna highlight the starfish. So I'm just bringing it around the starfish and it doesn't have to be exact. This is watercolor. I want it to look like a painting. I don't want it to look like a photograph. And I'm going to come back in here with water and soften this out. So don't worry. Mm. Beautiful. Now I'm going to get some more water on my brush. And I'm going to feather it out. What's really cool is down in here, you can see the multiple layers of color. It's very fun. Ooh, I love that. And if you want it to have more of an effect like you would see under the ocean, then, hey, we have sponges right here, right? Let's go ahead and get a little bit of water on the sponge, which is something that sponges just love. They love the water, and we're going to soften the edges here by using the sea sponge. That way you don't see the brush strokes as much. Let's get a little more water on there. Soften that up. I'm okay with this side being a little darker because it brings drama. It shows some depth to the starfish. Mm. Yes. Oh, she's so fun. You see, I got some of the color on here. And remember that the last color that I put on was acrylic. So if I let this dry, it's going to end up being permanent on there. So for now, I'm just gonna shove it right down into the water and not worry about it. Now we need to leave this to dry, or I can use the heater to dry the paint, being careful not to go in the middle because remember, the non-latex doesn't do as well with heat as the latex drawing gum masking fluid. I'm gonna apply heat now then and avoid that center area where I had put the non-latex. And now I'm actually gonna walk away for 15, 20 minutes and let this paper thoroughly evaporate the water from the paint and then it'll be ready for us to rub off. If it's at all damp, when you go to rub off your different areas of the drawing gum, you're gonna find that some of the color will end up getting on your fingers and it will make that white area not be white anymore. And we wanna be sure that the masking fluid does its work, the drawing gum stays in place and it comes off when we want it to come off, right? I've been very patient and waited for this to dry. I actually took a couple of erasers and stuck them underneath it so that it would raise it up a little bit and let the air flow. And I actually was blowing on it as well, just in order to be sure that it was completely dry. Now I'm gonna remove the drawing gum and then we'll see that white revealed. What I do suggest, however, is that you take either a dry paper towel or I have an old t-shirt, a cotton t-shirt, and you wipe over, 
at least the gold area if nothing else because gold tends to sit on top and that means when you go to rub off the drawing gum you may end up <laughs> getting gold in those white areas and I don't want that to happen so I'm wiping over it now none of it's coming up so to me that means it's in good shape the gold is settled in there we go no color came up off of this t-shirt which is a really good sign alternatively you can take a paper towel and put it down and rub over it like this and that way if there's anything that's not dry or if there's any excess that could come up off on your paper towel so i am in good shape right now let's go ahead and start rubbing this off i like to do it the old-fashioned way with my finger i feel as though feeling it with my finger is a better way to know where exactly where the drawing gum is do you see the white coming up there oh this is so much fun this is my favorite part is just rolling off the drawing gum when you have a big painting to do it can be a little hard on your fingertips and again that's why i have this t-shirt this soft cloth because you can also use the soft cloth with your finger here to help take that off but i find that if i use anything whether i'm using a cloth or a paper towel um, i'll use a shop cloth this is a it almost is like fabric it comes from the hardware store and you can also use that to rub it off i just feel more comfortable and i have found the best success myself using my fingers because then I can really feel exactly where that is but look at those white spots coming up you guys I love it Oh my gosh you guys remember this? this is where we put the sponge so you get these very organic looking shapes this is where I used the q-tip the tip of the q-tip to give us these dots and then I also used the q-tip to do some of the lines and I used the brush the little brush that you don't use for anything else but your drawing gum <laughs> was also used to make some of these ripples and then from the spatter of the toothbrush I am seeing lots of little tiny spots in here. How fun was that? I just love the reveal. Now you can see all these beautiful organic shapes from, from the sponge when we put some of the drawing gum in it with a little bit of water. And then all the other spots that I described a little bit earlier. Now I want you to notice in the very center here that the masking fluid that was non-latex, there's a little bit of color that shows through there. It's not as precise as using the latex one. It still works, it's just 
a little more organic in the way that a little bit of the paint can sometimes seep through there and that's what you have here you can be finished at this point if you like i think it's a beautiful composition or you can go on to the next step which i like to do and that is highlighting what you have here with some markers I have some of the Micron markers. They're my favorite accent markers to use, and they come with a lot of different tip sizes, which it tells you on the top here. The sizes go from, for instance, a 03 is a tiny tip up to a one, which is a large tip. So here's your large tip number one. And then I have a five and an eight, all the way down to a little teeny tiny three. I like to use the three, the eight, or the five, depending on what I'm doing, and I use the one if I wanna do large outlines. Oh, look, I left a little bit on there. And I'm going to use these to highlight the starfish. Then I'm gonna start with something, the O5. I don't wanna start this on my artwork. I wanna start the ink flowing on a paper towel to be sure that the ink is flowing well before I go on to my surface. And I'm gonna do something loosey-goosey. I'm not gonna make this sharp. As you can see, there's a lot of organicness here. If I really wanna go crazy, I can use my left hand because working with the left hand and I'm right-handed, I get a much looser sort of line, which is a lot of fun if I'm just trying to do a loose outline. And I like to do several outlines. I don't just do one. And now I am going to go back in with my right, my dominant hand, and I'm going to put some spots in, and I'm going to use a little bit bigger one. So this was an 05. I'm going to use the 08. There's the 08. Again, I'm gonna start it here and not directly on my painting to be sure the ink is flowing. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create some interest around the center and then down the sides. Now I'm going to change to the larger one, which is the one, the number one, and I'm gonna put some dots. They're a little bit bigger. The tip is a little bit bigger. So let me work some bigger dots in the middle here. I'm gonna to continue to put more dots in and then I'll come back and show you the finished starfish. There we go, now I'm done with the Micron pens and I'm gonna bring you down close to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. 